The East African tradition of the Maasai tribe is to greet one another with the words Kasirian and Gera, which is Swahili for, so how are the children? In that community, the well-being of their children is the highest priority. If you are interested in participating in thought-provoking conversations about the well-being of children and families, please tune in every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to Fresh Start Today on A60 AM WNOV. Together, we can save our children. Good afternoon. You're listening to Fresh Start Today, I am your host along with my co-host, Sean Roby. I'm Jermaine Reed, and we have the best engineer in the city in the studio today, Mr. Keon. How you doing, Keon? Sounds great. And the best videographer in town, Mr. Tony Cash, is with us today. And we're just going to have a great time. We're going to do a couple of community announcements. Um, and then we have um, a special guest in the studio who will be talking about understanding the impact of processed foods on child developing development, understanding the impact of processed foods on child development with executive chef and nutritional specialist, Mr. Joe Roberson. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. But this day in June, um, 1968, James Earl Ray, the suspected assassin of civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was arrested at Heathrow Airport in London. Uh, June is National Safety, Men's Health, and Effective Communication Month. So I'm sure there's a lot of community activities out there that folks can engage in um, around those particular themes. And um, just want to let you know that Fresh Start, Soul Cafe featuring um, Joe Robertson. We're going to be talking about that um, during the program today that we're going to be um, bringing folks together during the summertime. And it's going to be a great opportunity for us to come together and experience cultural dishes that are good for our mind, body, and soul. We will open up the uh, cafe starting in July, in July, July the yeah. 19th. Right. And um, we're going to have some dynamic lectures, spoken word artists, and musicians to address some of the most pressing issues facing mm-hmm. uh, families of color involved or at risk of entering the foster care system. And um, it's just going to be a safe place to network, uh, to, be, to learn, to heal over breakfast, lunch, and sometimes dinner. And for the sake of... Uh, this particular topic, the first convening that we're going to have on July the 19th will be at Fresh Start mm-hmm. from 6 to 8 p.m. on July 11th. And we're going to be expanding this conversation. Uh, the executive chef is going to come in and prepare some dishes for us and show us how to prepare certain healthy dishes, how to, you know, um, to just eat better and to eat. live better. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's going to be great, and particularly how our bodies respond to food, you know. So um, that's going to be great. And folks who would like to be a part of that, we have a limited capacity of 40 people. You can call 414-351-1100, extension 150, 414-351-1100, extension 150 for more information or to sign up to be a part of that particular session. Also, on June 9th and 10th, that's on this Thursday and Friday, the Heart of a Child, Heart of Child Guidance, creating a path that invites cooperation and contribution. Last week we had Dr. Benjamin Rader um, from Sebastian Psychological Family Practice. Uh, He was in, he talked about this training that's going on this Thursday and Friday uh, from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. and it's going to be focusing on positive discipline. Um, The trainer is Deb Pisnos and if you'd like to get more information about this, if you are a therapist, social worker, um, give a call to Dr. Radar, Ben Rader, and his phone number is 41, I'm sorry, 773-398-4648, 773-398-4648 with questions and confirmation. Sounds like it's going to be a great event. And we also have the uh, five, 500 Fathers United going to come up, and we know that fathers play a very significant role in the lives of children um, in terms of their development, so we really want to be out supporting um, the Milwaukee Fatherhood initiative um brother dennis walton and you can give those folks a call over at 414-286-5618 or call alderman ashanti hamilton at 414-286-2228 so it sounds really great it's going to take place on june 17th at moody park uh in the amani community 53206 it'll be a press conference at 5 30 p.m again give dennis walton a call at 414-286-5618 so, we're back here on Fresh Start. Today is 3.07 after the hour, and as I indicated, we're talking today about understanding the impact of processed foods on child development. Now, I was reading something that referred to there were over 50 years of studying that was done, of, of 50 years' worth of scientific articles about the nutrient 
content of organic and conventional foods. Mm -hmm. And researchers concluded, now this is interesting, Joe, that organically and conventionally produced foods are not significantly different in their nutrient content. Mm -hmm. So my question is going to be, and I'm sure we'll get to this in the course of our conversation, is why is this farm-to-table movement that started out in L.A., Mm -hmm. in California area, why is it sweeping the nation? How realistic is it to purchase and grow organic foods in poor urban settings? Is there a relationship between childhood development, childhood illnesses, and our diets or their diets? Mm-hmm. And so hopefully you'll be able to help us understand, sure. myself and this audience, mm-hmm. those particular factors. But also I think it's going to be interesting to figure out um, what is the difference between organic foods and processed foods mm-hmm. and whether there is a relationship between processed foods and autism, ADHD, and type 2 diabetes, particularly in children. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting. Um, Hopefully, if folks would like to join this conversation, they'll pick up the phone and call 414-444-5250, 414-444-5250. So my first question, or the first thing I'd like for you to do, Joe, is to introduce yourself to this audience. Well, my name is Joe Roberson. I am uh, a chef here in the um, city of Milwaukee. Uh, personal chef in Richfield uh, for one of our richer doctors, uh, Dr. Kylas Rao. Uh, I grew up here in Milwaukee, I trained at uh, MATC. Uh, um, I was a, uh, a student also at uh, was a restaurant called Grenadier's Restaurant. I was there for 21 years. I trained under a European chef. And so my background is predominantly French, Italian, uh, Mediterranean, and so um, what about soul food? Wait a minute, French Mediterranean. What would you say, Italian? What about soul food? Well, I found out. What you find? I found out that in the process of my training, the real soul food is the freshest of food. A lot of what we have come up in our culture, soul food, we basically greens, uh, ham hock, black eyed peas, and we basically neck bones, uh, neck bones, yams. Uh, fried chicken, yams, you know, sweet potato pie, you know. That's, that's not all, soul food. Wait a well, minute, this is a paradise chef. You just messed me up. What, what what have I been eating all these years? Well, basically, what we've been eating, we've been eating unhealthy. Wow, hmm. and that's the reason why you know we have so much diabetes, overweight. Um, our culture, you know, we basically have went in basically one direction of our culinary experience. But what I found out in, in, my, um, in my training was that the fresher the food is, the better you are. You know, our bodies were made to respond to what is fresh, what is alive, not what is dead. And, you know, and so, and, and so we – go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm processing. So you're saying our bodies respond to what is fresh. Yes. So this conversation is, is, is applicable to all human beings, whether in regards to what their age exactly. is and what their race is, you know. Exactly. Um, so our bodies respond to foods that are the freshest. So I'm trying to process that. What do you mean the freshest? I mean, well, how can you tell when food is fresh, not fresh, you know? Well, when I go to the grocery store and I, and I shop for uh, produce, mm-hmm. well, when I bring them home and, and process them in my kitchen, uh, 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 how I cook them, it determines how my body responds after I cook. And so after I cook the food, I grill the food, I saute the food, bake the food, roast the food, however I do it, if I do it uh, uh, like it, like it's supposed to be done, then my body will respond to what is being cooked. Now, if I overcook the food, take for instance, like a lot of times, you know, uh, in our homes we overcook broccoli. And so the broccoli, the pebbles off the broccoli, it falls off. Basically, you just take the water and drink the water because now the uh, broccoli itself is really no more good. Everything is in the liquid. All about the nutrients greens. and what, protein and whatnot what is what now about in greens? the base. So that's the same applies well, to greens. Well, we process the greens so much. We cook greens hours on hours. And actually, <laughs> and actually we should be cooking the food till, inje- till it's just done. Because he, uh, uh, the deeper the the deeper we, uh, the more we eat the greens that are fresh and not overcooked, the better process that our food, uh, that our bodies will respond Digest- to it. Okay, yeah, wow. right. Uh, okay. 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 But but when you cook the greens for hours in upon hours, well then basically just eat the pot liquor as uh, Grandmama said. Mm-hmm. 
And we throw that out. We throw it out. All the nutritional value the goes down the drain. Exactly. And so if you look at, if you look at uh, 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 the proper way to do nutrition, you know, the, um, uh, uh, they tell us that we should eat deeper greens, more greens, mm-hmm. spinach, kale, arugula, mm-hmm. things of that nature, collard greens. How about fresh greens? Fresh greens. Non-cooked. Spinach, yeah, yeah. Non-cooked greens. Right. You know, is the best form. Is, okay. is the best okay. form of eat. And see, because what happens but, is but, all of what we need is in the fresher product and not when it's all cooked. And for those of you that are saying, ugh, I tried that in the grocery store. I took a piece of greens and ate it, and it was like horseradish. It actually burned, you know, it was a burning like when you eat horseradish in the sinuses. And I was like, wow. So I tried all the greens, the turnips, the collards, and the mustard. In the store, right in there. In the store. Just a little piece. And, okay. and the mustards are the hottest. So I said, wow. It seems like we're cooking out the nutrients. Yeah. This is what's supposed to be in our stomach, killing things. There but this go. is also, I mean, th- this food pattern, these food behaviors is something that we're passing down from generation to generation, from adults to children. And we're all experiencing an increase in um, diabetes right. and some of these other health challenges. And we're going to get into that in terms of what impact does food have on our mental wellness mm-hmm. as well as our physical health. Sure. You know, um, Because I'm looking at a lot of things that are that's going on in the community in terms of juvenile and youth. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. so widespread, the the behaviors, you know, that folks are trying to pinpoint what is the source of all of this? Where is this coming from? Is it in the water? Is it in the milk? I've heard that. I've heard. Is it in the diet? It's it's a combination of things. Right. Okay. It's not just the the diet or not not just the milk, but it's also in the process of how the food is grown. Mm Mm-hmm. How much pesticide is in the food? And that's going to get to that whole organic versus right, right. natural right. versus homegrown mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. free grown sure. or all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so you've been an executive chef now for how many years? I've uh, been an executive chef now since 1999. Okay. And, and so this is interesting. But you said that you specialize in Mediterranean, Italian. Mm-hmm. What was the other? French. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, German. German. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing all these different ethnicities these nationalities, where does black folks' food fall in there? Well, I mean, black folks' food fall in there, but it is not recognized as much as the others. Take, for instance, like Mexican food. Mm -hmm. It is not recognized. Like, we have a lot more Mexican restaurants than we do African-American restaurants. And, and And one of the reasons why is because they use more fresher ingredients. They don't dog the ingredients out. You know, all of the other cultures, you know, they use all fresher ingredients. If you notice, uh, most of those cultures are a lot healthier than we are. Okay. okay. You know, and so that's one of the reasons why that we're in the condition that we're in is because we are not uh, uh, properly cooking our food like we should cook it. Now, could part of that be due to our experience, our circumstances? Because when we we got here by way of slavery. Sure. So we had to fend the best way we could. So hot cakes on... um, what do you call the the garden uh, tools and whatnot to make things work for ourselves, the different foods, eating the slop from the pig, rooter to the tutor. Yeah, so, yeah. again, and I think that speaks to what Jermaine talked about, because this has been passed down, passed down from, right. you know, and generation after roots, generation. And it does. In America, and, okay. And so a lot of families that are here now from other ethnicities, they have more of a connection to home. Sure, sure. And so we don't have that same sure. bond, so to speak. But we must remember this. And I was always taught Mm -hmm. that when you know to do better, then do better. That's right. You know, knowledge is here. There's no excuses. Okay. Okay. You know, I mean, you know to do better. So can you explain to me the difference between organic foods and processed foods? Sure. Organic food are foods that that don't have pesticides, uh, growth hormones, uh, anything that would uh, cause it to grow abnormally. Okay? Okay. Uh, 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 Okay. Organic foods are foods that does not uh, um, lay on the shelf very long. So, so they have a short shelf they life? They have a shelf short life. shelf life. Okay, so how long is that typically? Do, do you know? Normally five, six, five, six, seven days maybe. You know, you're looking at your fresh vegetables. They'll be, they will begin to start to, to deteriorate mm-hmm. very soon, a lot more, uh, a lot sooner than it would if you had food that was processed, that have pesticides, because these things now, they have, uh, uh, they have a longer shelf life. Mm-hmm. And anything that can last over three months, okay. well, you know something is <laughs> wrong with that food. And, you know, I but, think but, that speaks to when you talk about um, foods that are injected in, uh, with hormones and whatnot, and part of that is for 
capacity and to uh, gross produce, right. mass produce. Mass production. Right. And a lot of people don't realize that because the more we can produce, the more this particular company can make money off of it. Exactly. But it's really important. I, I appreciate you saying that, you know, it's not just about organic foods related to vegetables, mm-hmm. fruits and vegetables, but we're also talking about livestock. Livestock. That's right. Exactly. You know, chicken and eggs. and So so with organic foods, there's no pesticides. There is no synthetic fertilizers. Um, something about the trees. I, right. I, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 There, there, there are no pesticides. There are no, there are no um, growth hormones. Organic food is just natural food. And then also remember this here, that the ground that the organic food grows out of, it has to be uh, uh, deemed pesticide-free for at least three years in order for that ground to um, produce organic food. Now, you wow. said that it has to be natural, but we also see this stuff, you know, when, when, when parents are going out shopping, we see, we see labels that say natural versus mm-hmm. organic. Are they the same things? No. Okay. It is not the same thing. Okay. Organic food is, 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 is separates itself from what is natural. Natural food, they have some type of pesticide that helps it grow, mm-hmm. okay? They don't have all of what... Uh, is 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 uh is added to uh, uh the food, but the but the uh, uh the organic food mm-hmm. it, it it is completely separated. It is in its own market. It is in its own type of stable. It is 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 in its own way of uh, of growing. And so uh, the natural food it it has some type of uh, growth hormones. It may not have all of what. Um, all of what is um, added to it, but okay. it has some of that. It has something. Yeah. Okay. So organic appears to be the best way to go. Organic e- is the best way. Do to you go. agree that there is a difference in terms of the nutritional value between organic and sure it conventional? It is okay. Sure it is. Now, now one of the things that I that I learned is that uh, the nutritional value from organic food is that the food is fresher. You can taste the food. You know, it also have a a, a greater response on your body. Okay. Okay. It has a greater response in your brain, has a greater response on your stomach. Everything uh, that organic food, every time you eat it, it, it has a greater response versus conventional food. Conventional food, sometimes it has, uh, it retaliates in a way where uh, uh, certain type of um, allergies, people, mm-hmm. they come with allergies, okay. peanut allergies. Okay. You know, uh, 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 um, uh, these uh, the, what, what do you call the rubber gloved allergy? Well, latex. latex, latex. Yeah. You know, well, it has a negative ref- effect in your body because of, of all of the uh, all of the unnatural things that these um, fruits and vegetables are grown in. And if folks want to join this conversation, they can call four one four 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 five two five zero. We're talking about understanding the impact of processed foods on mm-hmm. child development with our special guest, Executive Chef Joe Roberson. Mr. Roberson, you can say yeah, something? I was going to say. Um, just kind of adding to something Chef Joe said earlier when we talk about knowledge and when people have knowledge, they are supposed to do better. Sure. And one of the critical things that you always hear on, you hear it periodically on infomercials and, and different fitness shows that you want to make sure that you read labels mm-hmm. on your foods. Cause a lot of that stuff they'll tell you, and it might have 13 letters in the name, sure. but um, we don't pay attention to those things. Well, we don't research it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think anything that I can't read, I shouldn't eat. Okay, makes sense to me. <laughs> if I, if it's a great I, rule to live by. If I can't read it, if I can't pronounce it, then where am I going to put it in me? Right. You know, and it's one thing. You know, I'm, I'm writing a book right now, and it's called Hard Healthy Gourmet. And one of the things that I recognize is that anything that is foreign that comes into the body, the liver does not recognize it. Mm-hmm. Okay. The liver help processes what is natural. And what is not natural, the liver, it, it goes into a confused state that, that, that now I'm trying to figure out how can I, how can I now uh, pass this through the body mm-hmm. because it's something that's unnatural. And a lot of people don't understand that, and that's why a lot of our livers, uh, uh, kidneys, and, and different organs in our body breaks down because it is spending more time trying to break down and trying to figure out what is this in my body. Foreign objects. Foreign it's objects. It's almost like when you say it that way, it kind of speaks to trauma. And when the body experiences some level of trauma, now uh, the different blood cells and whatnot, they rush to a particular area, area of the body to, to kind of see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, what's going on. Right. Exactly. 
Well, this is going to be interesting. We're going to take a break on Fresh Start today and come back with our special guest, Executive Chef Joe Roberson, on the other side of this break. This is Jermaine reporting from Fresh Start's WBC of Wisconsin Black Children Matter. Did you know that the number of black children in Milwaukee's foster care community continues to rise? According to the Department of Children and Families' most recent annual report, black children made up 68.2% of Milwaukee's foster kids. Many of these children are not only removed from their family and siblings, but are placed in families and communities that do not reflect or honor their race, culture, or heritage. Fresh Start is an agency that is committed to serving and advocating for black children. In order to meet the needs of this growing population, we need more black families in the Milwaukee area that love and celebrate black children. To become a licensed, culturally responsive foster parent with Fresh Start, you must be 21 years old, married, or single with a stable income, clear several criminal background checks, and complete 36 hours of pre-licensing training. To learn more about other qualifications, call 414-351-1100. That's 414-351-1100. Again, this is Jermaine reporting from Fresh Start, WBCM, Wisconsin Black Children Matter. Good afternoon. You're listening to Fresh Start Today with your hosts, Jermaine Reed and Sean Roby. Our special guest in the studio today is Executive Chef Joe Roberson. Um, and we're talking about the understanding the impact of processed foods on child development. Although there's some things we're, we're referencing actually can apply to individuals of any age, but we will be getting more into um, the impact of processed foods on child development and child behavior. So, um, Joe, we, we've had such great conversation offline, but I want to go back to something that we, we, we really want to have you hit on. What is the connection between a person's diet and their mental wellness? Well, the mental wellness is basically it's made up of several things. The, the wellness is made up of, of emotional, environmental, mm-hmm. intellectual, physical, occupational, spiritual, social, and financial. Now, when you put all those things together mm-hmm. and you marry them with your diet, uh, your diet plays a very important part because what it does, it helps you to stay motivated. It keeps your energy. It keeps you energized. Uh, it keeps you on a path of moving forward. Now, these is play such an important part that if you that if the food is not good, then it will affect your emotion. That's why they always tell us that we uh, feed our children good food before they go to school because what it does, it helps uh, helps in the development of their brain. It also helps them uh, pay attention in school. Yeah, focus. Okay, help them focus mm-hmm. and function. But it's not properly. just food. It's the type of foods because you can, you can food. have a, 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 a diet that's saturated with high fructose corn syrup. Sure. You, you know, and we can give kids all kind of snacks in the morning, but that's not healthy to give us a rush, that right. burst of energy. Mm-hmm. But is that a healthy choice? Well, no, that's not a healthy choice. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of times, you know, I wrote a seven-day uh, meal plan, and one of my items on the seven-day meal plan, according to the breakfast, is I have a lot of spinach and kale. I do egg whites. I do um, no sugar, period, at all. And everything that I try to produce, even even in milk, you know, uh, uh, they have fat-free milk, but in the fat-free milk, you have 13... Not the silk? F- milk, just regular oh, milk. Oh, okay. But, you know, you have 13% sugar that's in the milk, you know, that causes, that can cause diabetes and things of that nature. But is that cane sugar or is that some type of synthetic sugar? That what is, is that? A, that is a cane sugar. Okay. Yes. And so d- does your body respond differently or the same to cane sugar versus high fructose corn sugar, the, syn- the synthetic stuff? Your body will respond to sugar. Take, it, it, it responds differently to honey. Okay. Now, when you have cane sugar, it goes directly to the bloodstream. And then what begins to happen is when it goes to the bloodstream, then, you know, that's where diabetes come in. If you keep it in there long enough, then diabetes set in, you know. And, and we do have instances of high uh, instances of diabetes in juveniles, in right. youth, you right. know. So it could be or possibly related to the sugar intake, the mm-hmm. quantity of sugar that we're giving, because I know like sodas and Kool Aid, juices, and, yeah. and, and juices, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and and so there are several things that I, I know Mr. Robe is going to talk about in terms of things that we should not feed our children, that we should not put our into our children's body. And high fructose corn syrup was one of them. And so, um, l- let me see. There was, um, what are some other things that the children should not, the parents should not be feeding their children? Uh, first, in, uh, in, when, when we're looking at the um, in breakfast, the breakfast time, a lot of time they feed them um, fruit bars. 
Well, if you look at the label on the fruit bars, it has high fructose corn syrup in, in the fruit bars. Mm-hmm. You know, take for instance, like uh, we feed them a lot of fruit, like watermelon, okay. things of that nature. You know, that's a natural sugar, but that's a lot of sugar, and your body responds to sugar to, the, to same the sugar way. the same way. So cut back on the you sugar cut, intake. You cut back on the sugar intake and give them more things that are profitable, like like I, you know, we okay. do spinach a lot, you know. In the morning time. Lot, yeah, so, we do spinach. So, give, so are kids going to buy into that, though? Well, How many know, kids go eat spinach for breakfast? Well, well, you can. It depends on how you do it. Okay. Take, for instance, like, you know, um, you know, I, I put spinach in a smoothie. I take okay. spinach. I put apples, pineapples, you know, things okay. of that nature okay. in, in, a, in, in a smoothie. And they drink it, and they love it. Okay. And so what they're doing, they're getting their proper amount of fruit, proper amount of vegetables, you know, and then when we want to do some protein, I do a thing like called quinoa. I make a southwestern quinoa with black beans and, and corn and, you know, I mean, good corn, not the processed corn. Now, you know, I, I'm, I'm in my 40s and just hearing this, which are quinoa? Quinoa. Quinoa. And all these fancy things that you're talking about. And, and it's kind of hard for me to stomach that, you know. So I'm really trying to say, how do we make this palatable to young people? Well, we because do. It is a healthier way of living, I'm sure, mm-hmm. but how do we make it palatable? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's a way to make it palatable. You know, what I do for my for my family, okay. you, know, you know, I have everybody to come in and they try it. Okay. You know, first of all, I find a recipe that I know that would entice them, first of all. And then they come in and try it. They say, oh, Dad, I, I really like this. And now, now we have something going on. And so what needs to happen is... These individual families need to begin to test out different recipes, which I have for them. Okay. And test out different recipes and then give it to them. Tr- let them try it. Okay. So, so we know we need to get away from high fructose corn syrup. We got um, There's also MSG. MSG, right. And trans fat. Can you talk about what right. trans fats are? Yes, yes. Well, trans fat is a fat that, uh, uh, that causes high cholesterol. Okay. The triglycerides. Yeah, 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 okay. It can yeah, affect your triglycerides. Yeah. Okay. It can affect that in a way where, you know, where people, uh, you, you, your arteries are clogged, you know. Uh, that's where heart attacks and things of that nature comes in. And then it slows you down, you know. You know, it stops your brain from functioning like it's supposed to function. And so when we get all these trans fat in our bodies and, and, and then when we go to the doctor, the doctor looks at us and then begin to discover that we that we're you know kind of messed up you know okay and so and then so when we look at that we got to begin to change it a lot of what I change it to is olive oil mm-hmm. you know well, wait a minute I'm glad you talked about olive oil because I was just reading an article thanks to Michelle Pitts Luckett and it was talking about how when olive oil when you cook with it and mm-hmm. then you reach a certain temperature I think it's 250 degrees right. that then it becomes toxic for the body it there's does. something happens talk to me it about does. that it does it it, it, it becomes toxic but what I do. I try not to let it get to that temperature. I put it in salads. I make vinaigrettes with go. it. Okay. But what about frying your chicken? You no, can, no, you, you can't no. fry chicken in olive oil. Then what no, you're saying no. you can't canola oil. Canola oil. Okay. Right. And right. what does that affect on the body? Because this is stuff that we have to teach our children. Mm-hmm. You know, healthy. Price. So stay away from olive oil. You can saute with it. You can you can saute, but with you can't it. fry with it. Right. And, and you can also you know you can marinate your food with it also. Okay. You know, put okay. it on the grill. You know, and 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 use vinegars and lemons. You know, to break through to the meat. You know. But as far as uh, when I'm going to fry something, I will use canola oil, which is a, which is a, another good healthier oil. Okay, okay. versus vegetable versus oil. Vegetable oil. Exactly. Okay. 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 So, and you know, I think to add to that, when you talk about everything, and, and Jermaine mentioning, um, just starting to hear some of these uh, different uh, quote unquote exotic fruits and meats and mm-hmm. whatnot, things like that. One of the bases with all of this is the parent instilling discipline within themselves. And it almost goes back to when we were talking about or talking with uh, Dr. Ben Rader last week and talking about discipline. And that's one of the key things that's the foundation with all of this. And so when you talk about how do we get our kids to buy into it, the parent has to buy into it because part of that is kids learn by what they see. Okay. And so if they see me all of a sudden, I'm eating broccoli Mm -hmm. like it's a flaming hot part of them is going to slowly start to buy into that. And if I dress it up a particular way, then that's part of that uh, transition in uh, learning. Right, exactly. You know, I was reading an article that was talking about, um, you know, again, some of the foods that children should not put into their body or parents shouldn't purchase for their kids. And um, these preservatives and these food additives. 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 You know, um, and, and those are the... 
the ingredients that preserve the shelf life, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but with those preservatives, l- let's talk about that because there are nine, I think it was nine dyes that were um, pretty much rejected or th- there was an article that was done, some research mm-hmm. around, let me see what it is. Um, in 2008, the Center for Science and the Public Interest, interest in Washington, D.C. petitioned the Food and Drug Administration to ban artificial food dyes because of their connection to behavioral problems or challenges in children. Mm -hmm. Two years later, a new CSPI report called Food Dyes, a a Rainbow of Risk, further concludes that the nine artificial dyes approved in the United States likely are carcinogenic, Mm -hmm. cause hypersensitivity reactions and behavioral problems, Mm -hmm. and are inadequately tested. So some of these dyes, and a big dye that we see is red dye number 40. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're talking about our Flaming Hots, we're talking about Doritos, we're talking about the, the... Red gold jellyfish, whatever yeah. you call them, what you call them things, you, you know. But but it's, it's in our sodas, it's that red dye number forty, mm-hmm. and um, when we talk about carcinogenic, that carcinogenic, we're talking about food. I mean, cancer causing agents that yeah. are in food, exactly. and so you know, going back to this whole thing, we're talking about youth and behavior. I mean, we we have two and three year olds that are eating bags of flaming. Hot, yeah, that's true. or what is called the now what is the last few years the walk in tacos okay. or the takis and all these different things and that goes back to the uh, the original premise where when we talk about discipline and, and eating appropriately when we look at mass things that are mass produced it's cheaper mm-hmm. and it's easier for a parent who has one two or m- m- four kids in the morning you got to get this one together this one together and so it's easier to grab that. Uh, well, cereal fruit roller. Bar. Mm-hmm. Look at fruit roller. And that's a great example. You know, because it says the word fruit on there, right. you know, but a very small think, percentage yeah. of it is, 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 is fruit of any significant quantity. What, right. 10%? Right. You know? But, but again, it got the red dye. It has all the sugar mm-hmm. that's in it. So it's really not healthy. Where It's called junk food for right. a reason. Um, but now, l- let's look at this because, you know, this farm-to-table movement, what exactly is it? Well, farm-to-table movement has a lot to do with what is grown in in the field, mm-hmm. uh, we take it from the field and we cook it, and we f- and we um, we feed that to the people that wants to eat it. And so everything is organic, okay, and and we cook it in a way where you're able to uh, experience the texture, you see the color of it, you experience the flavors of the of the real food that comes straight from the ground, okay. And so it's not processed, okay. But it is come. It comes straight from the field, and you enjoy it. I've, I've done it several times, and it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Now, theoretically, that sounds really great. Sure. Uh, theoretically, sure. you know, in the books, and it sounds really great. What you learn in the classroom, in culinary school, it sounds great. But we're living in 2016, and we know historically that we were very are highly engaged in farming our food and gardening. You know, even going back 30 years ago, you, sure. you know, my grandfather was farming off of 27th and Brown, had us in the garden all the way down to 25th and Brown. He had, he seemed like he had plots on each block, mm-hmm. you know. But for the single parent mother, when we're living in communities that are headed by single parents for the most part, and individuals have multiple kids, and many of us are living beneath the poverty line, mm-hmm. How do we make farm to table work for us? How do we make organic food, which typically is more costly, or affordable, right? Or affordable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do we make that work for the everyday person in 2016? Well, look at the benefit from farming your own food. Mm-hmm. The benefit is that um, is that you grow your own food. Yeah. Secondly, you save money when you grow your own food. Thirdly, you're going to eat the food that you grow. Okay. And then that's the time f- consuming. Yeah, it is. But when you think about when you think about uh, uh, the the long term effect that it has on you versus what you're doing without it, you know, take for instance all the all, benefit, the, yeah. all the diseases that is taking place now. Okay, you have diabetes, you have kidney disease, you have heart disease. Mm-hmm. You know, and everybody they're moving toward fast food. Well, they're on fast food now. And so when you think about these long term effects that have a detriment on you, and then you see your children having detriment. You know, now your children's overweight, you're overweight, you know, everybody's overweight, we're eating, everybody's eating wrong. But when I choose to, um, when I choose to raise my own food, I'm healthier now. 
Okay. Statistics tells me. But if I don't have the time, if I don't have the time to garden, what is my alter- what are my alternatives? Within your alternative, you either need to go to a, 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 a grocery store that will that will provide for you. Is that wholesale foods or outposts or something like that or not? Go to what? What are these places on the side of the but road? But it's not the gas station. We can't grocery not shop at the gas station. Farmers market. The farmers, farmers market. market. Yes. Okay. Okay. And and Will Allen has that whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Growing okay. Up. Yeah. But we should not be grocery shopping at the gas station. No. And corner exactly. stores. Exactly. But we not. do that. You know. And our and our grocery bag consists of what? Takis. Takis. Flaming yeah. hot. Right, and even right, with that right. though, when you and look may, at and maybe a banana. You know. Maybe. And even at the gas station, you'll have. All the chips that are fifty cent or seventy five mm-hmm. cent, but that single banana would be a dollar yeah, or dollar exactly. fifty. Exactly. You know what? It's actually when you grow up out to the rural areas and you ride down a lot of these roads mm-hmm. onto the highway, they have a lot of fruits and vegetables out there from their gardens and their plots. So let me ask you something, man. What's time consuming to you? Because I deal with a few gardens, <sighs> so when you say you don't have time. And that's powerful. Well, well, you know, when you don't have time, what I'm talking about when you when you're doing all this running around, you have to work. You have to clean your house. You have to wash clothes. You have to do homework as a single parent. So now I have to go dig up the ground. I have to plant. Well, I got one right now, but I'm talking about I've had I've had a number kid. But I, no, he's coming pick us up. He's come pick up all of us. We did the kids. So you save money, you exercise, and you get fresh fruit. But I'm hungry today. And I gotta wait for this seed to come up. There's a pro- it's called a process. You, you know, you, I think part of that is it's that it's that family collective. But, but here's the piece when we look at time from so many different aspects. Right. Because it's not just about tilling the ground and planting and waiting for that food to come up. But when you talk about how the shelf life of fresh food only lasts so long, mm-hmm. so you know you gotta constantly have this rotation of food that crops that's coming up because. These greens are only going to last how many days? But even with that, I think that builds. But I guess we cook it and store it. Right. Can. Can. Exactly. I was just going to say that. You know, once more time, they weren't refrigerated. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. And I think that speaks to that whole that discipline component where when you got the kids out there and they're at the grocery store with you and they see you reading labels and, oh, we're going to get this fresh fruit versus this, and we cook two, three meals on Sunday so we can get through the week, we're teaching them so many different independent living skills, and these are things that they can pass on to the next generation. Right. So I think time is one of those things we can't get back, and it's only so much of it in a day. Mm-hmm. But if we carve it out, because we can carve time out to watch our favorite show, the basketball exactly. game and whatnot. So we have to keep all those things in mind and sacrifice time for mm-hmm. the betterment of not only us but our kids. Well, that sounds great. We're, uh, we're going to continue this dialogue on the other side of this break. I'm talking with Joe Roberson, Executive Chef Joe Roberson. We'll be right back. Do you know what Nelson Mandela, Andrew Jackson, Malcolm X, and Steve Jobs have in common? Each of these individuals were world leaders who were once in foster care. We often hear about the road from foster care to prison, but did you know there's another road from foster care to a world stage? Fresh Start Family Services is looking for adults to become licensed foster parents. Every child needs a caring adult in their lives. Wouldn't it be great if you could foster or adopt the next world leader? For more information on how you can become licensed with Fresh Start, please call 414-351-1100. That is 351-1100. Hey, good afternoon. It's 348 on our dial. It is a beautiful day outside. Um, and we have in the studio with us Executive Chef Joe Roberson. And, and I don't know, for those of you who have been listening, if you would like to get in contact with um, Chef Roberson, you can call 262-309-8200. Seven six two six two three zero nine eight two seven six. We've been talking about the impact of processed foods on child development. And I guess it's on human development, if you want to know the truth. But yes. it's been a really great conversation. We've talked about these preservatives and additives, the difference between organic and natural foods and processed mm-hmm. foods mm-hmm. and um, how to prepare foods and how that the freshest foods and your, uh, your body responds Mm-hmm. Best to the freshest, freshest foods freshest. and how to pick these foods up. So if mm-hmm. I'm if I'm in a produce line and I'm I see some greens over here and I see some um, I don't know what other kind of vegetables are out there cabbage. How can I tell if that those greens are fresh? Well, sometimes uh, it's under a label either organic or conventional. It may not say conventional, but you will see the label organic. And then if you um, there's a process that I go through that I use is that when uh, if I want a, a carrot, if I bend the carrot. And it bends all the way over without breaking. You don't need to eat that carrot, okay? Okay. If you shake it and it's very flimsy, 
You don't need that carrot. But if you take a fresh carrot, a fresh carrot will snap on you. It will snap. And so it's fresher. So the, the, the quicker it snaps, the fresher it is, okay? Now, when you're looking at greens or yeah. spinach, yeah. you know, you can tell right away where, you know, you can look at the stem of the greens or the stem well, of how the— How it's supposed to look? Well, it's supposed to look green. Okay. It's supposed to look green. Okay. Not brown or gold or golden looking unless you're looking at kale or, yeah. or a Swiss chard. You know, which a type of a, is a type of a green. Mm-hmm. But when you're looking at any, any type of fresh vegetables, it should look like it says it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be green and fresh. It's, it's supposed to be vibrant. Okay. okay. And so that's what I look at. Well, you know, I'm hoping that the community um, folks will give me a call at 414-351-1100, uh, extension 150, so that they can join us at the Fresh Start Soul Food Cafe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soul Cafe. And you're going to prepare some of these healthy dishes and, and take us around the world. You know, some sure. Mediterranean, French, Italian. Be glad to do it. you got to show them how to do some yams. For a healthy way of doing some yams <laughs> that taste good. You I know, because I can't take what, what, sugar in it or some no, kind of sugar. What? No, what? I did it with roast garlic and rosemary. Oh, come on now. See. <laughs> See. And you know, and, and that goes back, and I, I really appreciate you saying that, Jermaine, because it's really, and you mentioned this at the beginning of the show, a paradigm shift. Okay. And many times we look at changing our mind state when the doctor tells us we only got X amount of time to live, or now we've been diagnosed with this, this, or Type this. Type 2 diabetes. So now we need yeah. to look at changing things. But if we can get ahead of that, mm-hmm. We can live longer in our kids. And we need to start with our children, you you know, to eat healthy Mm -hmm. as children, you know, not wait until you're 45 to start changing Mm -hmm. your diet or whatever. That's right. Um, And so, again, that's so our Fresh Start Soul Cafe will be on July the 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. And you can call 414-351-1100. And it's important, bring your children so they can learn, particularly your teenagers, so they can learn healthy ways of preparing foods. Um, I want to see some greens with some, is smoked turkey good for you? No. Oh, Lord. Well, and the reason why, because it's... it's Carcinogen? It's, well, no, it's sodium. A lot of sodium is in there. A lot of sodium in it. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll smoke, yeah, in our yeah. greens and yeah. our vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. and our beans is L- lot of sodium. high sodium intake. Lot of sodium. All right, so we talked about uh, red. I don't know. What he I'm just took eat. all the air out, of, all the air out of sale. I don't know. He just defeated. I don't know how we're gonna do this. But 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 in our community, um, we often hear people talk about food deserts, and mm-hmm. and I'm wondering, you know, you know, is were these deserts created? Mm-hmm. Were they engineered, and 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 why and by whom? They were uh, engineered, and the, and the reason why is because uh, it's all about money, you know. The, uh, the more that they can engineer, the, the more food that they can produce in a short, limited time, the more money that they can make. And it's really what it all really boils down to. And so all this is engineered. Take, for instance, like diet sodas. You know, you got aspartame. That stuff was engineered in a, in a, in a lab. In a lab. A lot of stuff is engineered in a lab. Everything, yes. Right. And that's what makes it processed. It's processed, okay. right. Okay. It's okay. all engineered. And so, you know, they do it to make more money. And that's exactly what's happening. We see a lot of parents give their children hot dogs. It's not good. Okay. Full of sodium. It's convenient. It's cheap, but it's not good. It's cheap. It's, it, 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 it's, but if you notice, and even sometimes, you know, when I used to eat hot dogs, um, sometimes they would um, accidentally leave some bone chips in it. You don't know if you ever ever experienced that. Well, even in ground beef. Or, yeah. yeah, you get that. Yeah. 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 And then even in ground beef, I, I saw this one um, show where they put ammonia in the, in, in the ground beef, and then they put something else on top of that. So that the ammonia can have, a, so that that beef no, no. can have a longer chef life. And ammonia, so, yeah, and have, yeah, it's really, and then we buy it and eat it, and then it helps with keeping the color, and, and, and that's one of the critical the, exactly. things too. When you talk exactly. about all of the different hormones that are mm-hmm. injected in food, mm-hmm. uh, we eat in some instances, or we purchase items by what we see. Yeah. So if something is real bright red real bright or bright red. yellow, yeah. and red good, is though. one of those colors that. Gra- that we gravitate mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. so we're more inclined to want to buy uh, more of these. And not to mention, if I can get twelve of them for two dollars, right? But we also need to understand, you know, like with a high fructose corn syrup, but there's a lot high content of mercury yes. that's in there, and we're putting wow. that into our human body, that's you know, right. in, into children's body. Mm-hmm. So no wonder we're seeing, you know, ADHD, ADHD at a rate right. that we're seeing right. some of these mm-hmm. other challenges mm-hmm. in childhood illnesses like right. um, autism. Autism, like yeah. yeah, autism's a yeah. big one, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So wow. So um. This has really been and is an interesting conversation. Again, we're talking with Chef Joe Roberson, um, who is the executive chef, and his phone number is 262-309-8276. He'll be happy to work with you and your family and getting a meal plan together. How do you develop a meal plan? You talked about earlier, 
you know, is that something you look at body max index and, you know, you have to analyze every person in the family? Or, I mean, what is that and how do you create one? No, the way I create a, a meal plan is what we, what we need as a whole. Okay. okay. So if we need uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, very little protein, that's how we create a meal plan. And then, and then if someone is overweight, well, the, what we do, we take into consideration uh, uh, what can we do to help them along so that they can get to where they need to be as, as mm-hmm. far as their weight is concerned. And so, you know, fried foods is not going to do it. We already know that. Okay. But, you know, when you do a lot of fruit, vegetables, like I, I, um, I grill a lot of asparagus and I grill a lot of peppers and I use a lot of spinach and arugula, things of that nature, things that are, that are really um, healthy for me. And that's how my, my meal plan is created. And, but, you know, I do add some good meat in there. I marinate some meat, you know, and uh, put it on the grill. Don't fry it, but I put it on the barbecue grill and just, you know, just have a wonderful uh, meal with it. So that's how I do it. And, and, and you know, I think before, because we're uh, coming to the end of the show, just a couple quick things for our listeners to keep in mind when we're talking about all of the sodiums, high fruit, corn, fruit, fruit, high toast, mm-hmm. <laughs> corn syrup. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Corn. The red dyes. You high can go. Toast. Right, and you can go to www.red40.com, and it'll show you a variety of those, Mm -hmm. the different chemicals and whatnot. But I think with that, some things that we can do to counter some of the food deserts and whatnot, because if you get food share, some of these places that sell organic foods, um, they do accept food share and and quest cards and whatnot. So it can be done. It was done for centuries, and it can be done, but we have to have a paradigm shift. Right. Um, And we can't be lazy. as as Joseph. You know, and it's not just about a matter of convenience, Mm -hmm. but um, we got to put the work in. You know, we got to create better healthy eating patterns um, for our families. You know, um, I just want to say something in terms of, um, parents who have children who may be autistic and have ADHD and diabetes, that there are certain foods that they certainly need to eliminate from mm-hmm. their diet. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a study in 2012 published in the Clinical Epigenetics found that high consumption of additives like high fructose corn syrup contributes to mineral deficiencies that might contribute to autism spectrum disorders. In a 2011 randomized controlled trial published in The Lancet, children with ADHD who eliminated processed food showed a significant decrease in ADHD Mm -hmm. symptoms Mm -hmm. when the foods were Mm reintroduced into their diets, the symptoms intensified. Mm. So those things are really important as it relates to type 2 diabetes. According to a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, processed foods contribute to the development of insulin resistance due to their concentration Mm -hmm. of chemicals called advanced glycation in products or AGEs. Mm -hmm. So um, if your children are presented with some of these challenges already, um, some of these health concerns, it would be really interesting um, and important for you to look at modifying their diet. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we complain about kids who are placed in our homes and our program, and they're just hyper, 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 Mm -hmm. but yet then we give them um, a a juice Mm -hmm. box. You you know, and and we give such a powerful Mm -hmm. statement because if you give a kid in the morning who already has – a lot of energy, a, lot of energy. a fruit Sugar. cocktail thing. Then mm-hmm. they eat the school lunch, and then they turn yeah. around, and you give them well, a snack, and then they get home, and you don't let them outside. And then they have all this energy because <laughs> of sugar. Up. We have sugar all this have energy, yes, right. and then we say, Mr. Reed, these children are hyper. They need to be on medication. Right. Now That's on not medication. always the case. <laughs> it's <laughs> counterproductive. They need some space right. to do cartwheels. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they, well, not only just play, but they need a healthy diet. Right. Absolutely. You know, to, to mm-hmm. couple that with exercise. Mm-hmm. And you just can't just eat, but you also have to have that those outlets, those outlets. to Absolutely. expend your energies or whatever. But this has been a great conversation mm-hmm. on Fresh Start Day. We're talking about the impact mm-hmm. of processed foods on child development with our special guest, yeah. uh, Executive Chef Joe Roberson, mm-hmm. who's going to help me lose, what, 10, 15 pounds, put me on a meal plan there and cook go. these yams with, what, rosemary? And rose girl. So you have to follow up with the people that taste about like. six weeks. Yeah. Well, well, if they if they see me and I drop ten pounds, then <laughs> it'll speak for itself. All right. Okay. Thank you all for tuning into Fresh Start today. We'll be back next week. Until then, be well, be safe. Talk to you later. Okay.